Hi again, it's me, and today's video is another YouTube recycling episode. If you didn't know the intro, then get knowledge. Um, if you do, nice one. Someone requested it. I actually planned on doing it even without the request, but I, I do stand that. Um, but yeah, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to Recycling Magic 2023, episode number 23, I presume of YCC, the third episode of the Tour de France. If you missed the first and second episode, then do go ahead and check them out uh, as they were somewhat important. Also, thank you for the feedback, uh, mainly on the camera, because, I mean, I recorded episode one and two um, before uploading episode one, so therefore I did not know what you guys thought of it, but a passing from, I had, from the fact that I had a fat forehead, uh, somewhat positive responses, <laughs> so we'll take it. Uh, and yeah, as I said, this episode is the um, third part of the Tour de France. We'll take a look at the stages. We will um, partake in, in today's video, starting with the mountain stage between Mors de Navarre and Saint Jean de Maurienne. We'll then go to Chambéry for second stage uh, between Chambéry and Gap, Sister Rombole Valence for a sprint one, Bourg de Perge Monde for a hilly one, Rodez Revel for a sprint one, and finally we'll wrap it up with the stage between Revel and Axe 3 domaine. In today's episode, we will have five stages, uh, starting with this one between Chambéry and Gap. We'll then have Sisteron pour les Valences for stage number two, Bourg de Péage Monde, Rodez Revel, and we'll wrap it up with Revel Axe Rodemain as we'll enter the Pyrenees for the first mountain stages of the Pyrenees. Hopefully, things can go as well as they did in the Alps because they went somewhat incredible. Very decent day across the board for the team here. Everyone has a positive day. Brilliant. Uh, we're going to capitalize on that and send someone in the breakaway. Most likely Magnus Court Nielsen. Um, also probably Caden. Ah, there's no point for Caden Groves now. We're, we're not going to send Caden. Caden can stand the peloton. Uh, but yeah, Magnus Court Nielsen and Benjamin Thomas could be on two riders in the break. Plus five for Sergito. I know, I know his name is Sergio, right? Technically it's Sergio Andres Higuita, but I just like keep calling him Sergito. And like, what are you going to do about it? Nothing. You're locked down. And, um, well, Erika Green, no, Greenage, uh, Mitchelton Off White, sorry, decided to attack as a group to get the mountain points at the Côte de, uh, de la Fray, which I, f I found quite jokes, to be honest. I do find that quite jokes. Um, but we're, we're, we're good to go, we're safe. Benjamin Thomas still in, the pro in uh, protection on Magnus Court de Gap, 312 with 100 kilometers remaining in the stage. And the race is proving to be a bit tough on uh, some of our riders, including Clément Champoussin and Diego Camargo that got dropped, but also Caden Groves, who is saying goodbye to any hopes of winning today, uh, which is somewhat sad. Uh, I just need basically Clément to stay in the first group now. That's, that's, that's basically what I need uh, more than anything else. Um, we still have Magnus in the first group, so should it be a win for the breakaway? I think we might have... We may have got it. Should it be a win for the peloton? Um... Sergio is there. A lot of riders have been dropped in this stage, more than I had, uh, than I had thought of, if I'm going to be honest with you. Mats Patterson and Philippe Gilbert trying to come back here with Mathieu van der Poel. Having a stinker of a Tour de France, Mathieu van der Poel. As Clément got dropped, getting water every single damn time. I get why Benji never gets water. It's just to prevent that kind of things from happening. I read that from him. Pete Sagan is still here, though, for uh, the sprinters. Uh, so hopefully we can, uh, well, change that as we're now, uh, well entry in the Col du Noyer, 12k until its summit. Magnus Court Nielsen, Benjamin Thomas still leading away. And Magnus Court is gone with Matthew Holmes, Lucas Hamilton, Ben O'Connor, and mainly Benjamin Thomas were not able to follow the rhythm of Magnus Court. Uh, I'm trying to go for a solo run right now, I'm not, I don't think it's the best shout, but the gap with the peloton is increasing because the peloton slowed down massively. Um, no one wanted to follow Thomas Pitcock, the um, the rider of, of uh, Ineos Grenadiers, or Michal Kutkowski for the same instance. Uh, and it allowed for uh, for the gap to increase drastically right now. As um, yeah, we're nearing the summit. Matthew Holmes not singing a single relay to Magnus Cortinson, and most likely because Matthew Holmes does not have the legs to take a relay, Magnus Cortinson is going for a solo run, 38 kilometers for him, and the gap is 4 minutes 50 seconds on the peloton, peloton where uh, Pitcock did try to accelerate one more time, uh, but 
sadly, he cracked again. Yeah, I don't think anyone will um will see Magnus Court ever again in this stage. I think he's got the win sealed, and he's actually gonna make a nice comeback in the GC. You know, he was nine minutes down. Uh, he's gonna yeah, he's gonna make a nice comeback, nice fifth top fifteen. If things uh keep going like this with the peloton not really chasing him down, uh trying more to manage the gap more than anything here, as it is still Tom Pitcock, the Brit of Venus Grenadier pacing. The gap is just under five and a half minutes with one more climb where I believe though the peloton will most likely try to pace. If they don't, uh, well, I will. And there it goes. Guillaume Martin going for a move. Jakob Fulsang, the man who's targeting the Ronde van Vlaanderen. Dan Martinez chasing him down. Sergio Iguita did not uh, get bogged down by the move and read it quite well. Okay. Good. 31 riders in this group. We've got an attack by Mikel Landa on the left-hand side of the road, followed by Marc Hershey, the rider from Sunweb. Roglic uh, losing a few positions, <laughs> trying to follow the move, actually. Oddly enough. Okay. Uh, am I already... Wait, is that the summit? No, the summit is coming up. Okay. Let's pace with Clément Champoussin. And let's try to make some of those... Um, Riders in my wheel crack with Clément up until the summit. Come on, Clément Champoussin accelerating. Formula Crevac full song in the wheel. Yeah, no, I don't think I can do anything. I'd, I'd, I'd be very surprised if we could do anything today. As Sergei Guita goes for a late move. Oh, you know what? You know what? We've attacked right before the downhill portion, and it could prove to be very, very useful as Magnus Cornelsen is on his way to take a very nice win. Uh, Clément, Clément, Clément. Take the wheel of Michal Kitkowski, that could be a good wheel for you. Uh, Iguita dropping Matthew Holmes right now, perfect. As Davide Formolo comes back at Matthew Holmes. Hi Davide, why are you chasing me down? Is Tade in yellow? He's not. Davide. Dickhead. Magnus Kort Nielsen though is going to take the win. Here in Gap, get in there, that's a very, very good way to start off the episode. Let's come back to Sergio Iguita though, because we've got a more pressing mana here. In a, well, potentially a second place and many some time gap uh, on, um, on Julien and all them. Oh, actually, why is Julien already sprinting? Why? 1.2k, we're going to go now with Sergio Iguita. Can we hold on for a little gap? We should have a gap. We should have a gap. 24 seconds. Could we potentially be in yellow? Comes the end of the stage. I did not count on it, but I feel we might be. Very good win it's from uh, Magnus Court Nielsen. However, no gaps between Higuita and Hershey. That's two stages in a row. That's two stages in a row where the gaps have uh, fucked us. Okay. Well then. Uh, we're now 16 seconds beyond Roglic as we get 6 seconds of bonus seconds. I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm pretty convinced there was more than 20 seconds here. Minus 3 for Hausler today. Well, that sucks. Uh, knowing that this was a sprint stage. Oh, we for Caden. Press 3. Press 3. Can we finally get a decent result with Caden Groves? Or will I once again choke? I don't know. Latest tendencies uh, would probably mean I'm going to choke here. Because I've gone, what, three very decent results in a row? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a nail on this one. I've just seen that there is a lot of wind, uh, and that wind will be basically a front wind in the Col de Cabre. I'm trying to think if it couldn't be a, a decent idea to pace in that climb, just to try and like piss people off. Uh, I know I won't hold the rhythm for short, for, for long, but it could be uh, just, just a lake water just to see what happens. Um. We'll, we'll go like that. Uh, Simon behind. Sergio behind. Caden here. And, uh, yeah, no, we don't need that on each place. Henrik, you can stay at the back as well. Well, the aim is simple. It is to make the Col de Cabre one of the toughest climbs there's been in recent years. Let's go 95 with Benjamin Thomas to start it off. As I said, lots of wind. 
uh, currently coming sideways, which is good. That's uh, probably the best scenario right now for us uh, to create any sort of gaps at the summit. As we're trying to catch as well the silver marker, N nothing against the lad. Uh, it's just that he's, he's there and I don't really want him to be here, if that makes sense. Uh, but Benjamin Thomas has done a very stellar job already. He's basically killed Diego Andres Camargo, which is not stonks, if, if anything. Benjamin, please move. Thank you. Harold Tejada, now accelerate. What were you saying? Is the peloton stretch? No. Exactly not what I wanted to see. Magnus called faces until El Summit. And. Yeah, no, 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 no one's gonna get dropped out of this. Apart from, like, my team soon. Oh, you know what? You know what? We actually did get gaps. We actually did get gaps. <laughs> we just, like, at the 37 seconds behind, but we did get gaps. I sadly no one's going to believe in my chances there in the break. Because uh, we're very far from the line. But hadn't we been that far away, I think something could have been done. We're just going to protect our guys. Uh, I know I need to get water. I'm aware of that. I'll just get the sprint with Caden Groves as well. Mads is still in the first group. Can we navigate through that peloton? Not really, no. Uh, and Caden is just going to get smoked. So Mass Person still leads after the student student sprint. Zandos in fifth place. It appears that Zandos might have lost his juju. Which is not to displease me. It's a downwind portion right now as Henry Hausler is one minute in the lead. Um with 36 kilometers left. Let's be realistic. He's not going to make it. I just wanted him to be in the break for the funsies. Hopefully he would have been followed by Zandos Bezegitov. We could have had a rematch or something. Uh we didn't. So yeah, here we are. Uh just 41 wind, just pushing us and dragging us towards uh, the coast as we'll reach Bourlevalence. Uh, so therefore, definitely not the coast. I have no idea what I'm saying, uh, but we move. Yeah, there's been some breaks. There are echelons. There are echelons there. 42 riders in the first group. Okay. Okay, uh, let's drop Hausler back to the first group. I don't know if they're going to stop pacing or not. They're not, which is good for me. Uh, let's have Hausler in the Wheel of Higuita for now. Interesting. Very interesting. What are we saying for Tejada as well? Because I really need him to give me water for now. As long as Higuita and Groves have it, I'm fine. Sidewind for the final 10 kilometers. Tejada will not be able to provide water for uh, Magnus Court, Benjamin Thomas, and Clément Champoussin. Actually, for, K for, for Court, yes. That's my guy. Uh, maybe for Thomas as well? Get in there soon. Perfect. Uh, but not for Clément. Clément will have to deal with, uh, well, his lack of hydration on his own. Okay. I don't want to kill him too much as well, because he's kind of like my GC second guy, so I might need him later on in, like, this tour. Uh, so, like, killing him for the sake of, uh, of a sprint doesn't seem like the wisest of plans. Uh, we're now going to get front wind, though. As Krovek is struggling here with Team Narensman, Julian Lafilippe coming back through the peloton. Uh, let me just have that take. There we go, perfect. Four kilometers to go. Kaden Groves in a decent position, but again, this is front wind. So the later you wait, the better it is for your sprint. And I think everyone knows it. Um, we're just going to increase our rhythm as one does. Take that left hander with Benjamin. Hopefully, things can go somewhat smoothly. Sidewind now. We're going to have a right-hander quite soon. Let's launch now. Wait for the corner. Actually, no. No, 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 no. Let's not wait. Let's just start now. Caden against Demar. It's going to be... It's going to be Caleb, innit? Oh, for fuck's sake, it's Caleb Ewan against Kate. Ah. Uh... Caden comes up in second place. Higuita, Demar, Pedersen, Magnus, Cordenlison, Philipson, Pogacar, and... Primoz Roglic. Ah, I was this far. This far off. That's an L. There's a lot of, uh, of groups spread along those roads, but I do not think we'll see any gaps whatsoever today. Maybe gaps with, like, I don't know. The, not even this group. No, I don't think we'll see any gaps today. I thought I had it for a second when I came back on Demar, but Caleb Yun was the strongest Australian today. 
and he takes the win ahead of Killing Graves and Sajay Guita, who gets another 4 seconds for the uh, GCU, which is good. He's now jumping into, uh, well, he's still second, 12 seconds behind Primoz Roglic. Uh, nothing has changed in the top 10. Tijbenut is still in Polka. Caleb Ewan takes the green jersey of Mats Pedersen now. Uh, Kaden making an appearance in the 8th position, 119 points behind Caleb Ewan. Things are going to be quite tough for him. Uh, and uh, was that 98 points um, between Hausler and Caleb Ewan. So if you combine my two Australians, uh, I'm, I'm better, isn't it? Heinrich is injured. What injured? Heinrich does not feel well. Uh, that's not good. I mean, let's be real, it's not like this is my most important rider, but it's still a goat, as I said. I called him Julius Randle many times for a simple reason. He is the greatest of all time in his sport. Uh, Iguita with a plus two, Clement with a plus two, Caden with a plus five. No, that does mean anything because he's never going to win today. The roads are way too steep. Uh, what are we saying for Magnus? Plus three. The only worry I have with Magnus is I'm not sure the peloton will allow him to join the break. Crash, Julien Lafayette crashed. Julien Lafayette has crashed. Um, I mean, it's not too much of an issue, right? It's 140k away from the end. Uh, he's got teammates waiting for him, the likes of Yves Lampard and Joel Major. Uh, however, with the peloton already chasing down the breakaway, um, they might have to do some sort of effort because the breakaway isn't gone um, as it could have been on some other stages. More crashes within the peloton. Dylan Ronewegen has crashed. Jay McCarthy, Sepkus has crashed. Anyone withdrawing? Uh, I saw one rider. Yeah, there we go. That's David de la Cruz. And that's crucial. That is crucial. That's probably the, the best mountain teammate of Tadej Pogacar. And Tadej already not having maybe the best of Tour de France. Losing his key teammate. Okay, so after crossing the summit of the Suc de Montiverno, I believe I can come to a conclusion that uh, Lucas Hamilton and Philippe Gilbert are the two best riders in this breakaway right now. Uh, Magnus Court is quite strong. Ben O'Connor, not as much as I would have believed, probably regarding his stats. Uh, but Magnus, doing quite well. Now uh, the peloton is chilling, basically. Uh, 2.4 minutes. 2.4. 2 minutes and 40 seconds behind the peloton, sorry. Beyond the breakaway. Lucas Hamilton counterattacks. Um, Lucas Hamilton faces or emerges as a, a potential threat for the mountain classification. Not that I'm interested in said mountain classification, um, but it is interesting because I had seen Georg Zimmermann, we had seen Tish Benut, we had not seen much of Lucas Hamilton, the um, apparent GC leader for, uh, for Mitchell and Scott as he greets and Clément at the last position and Terrada is ahead. No, 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 I'm gonna get dropped because of that fucking shit. Court is strong again. Court is strong again. It really is. And as expected, we did get dropped. Brilliant. Uh, well, I need you to come back then. 37 kilometers remaining. No breakaway anymore. Or no breakaway in sight as uh, the peloton will most likely slow down and head towards Mond for the Côte de la Croix-Neuve. Sergio is in a decent shape. So is Jean Poussin. Uh, so is Terrada actually for a teammate. But I don't know. I feel like I have a card to play here and his name is Caden Groves and I do not know what to do with him. There's been a big crash. There's been a big crash involving a leader. Oh, it's, it's Van Der Poel again. He can't catch a break. He's either dropped or on the ground. Lutsenko is well being down. The, one of the leaders of Astana. Again, an Astana team deprived of any GC guy um, this season. Okay. Well then. Uh, big yell for Van Der Poel. We, on the other hand, are readying ourselves for the Côte de la Croix Neuve. As, uh, was that? Matteo Trentin? Matteo Trentin accelerates. At the front, Clément Champoussin will protect Sergei Guita at this point. And Terrada can go in the wheel of, uh, of Sergio. Yeah. And we're going to start the Côte de Clément Champoussin leads away with Sergei Guita in the wheel. It's a 3 kilometer climb. Very short, but an average gradient of 9% and mainly a max percent of 167 as Thomas Pitcock tries to accelerate on the left-hand side of the road. That is a ballsy move by uh, the, uh, by the, uh, the, the Brits. As Jakob Fulsang on his terrain attacks, followed by Julien Lafilippe. Clément Champoussin doing a very strong climb right now, strong and stable, unlike Brexit. Uh, come on, Sergio. 1.4k. He's doing well. Magnus Kort as well, holding on alongside uh, the likes of Pete Sagan, Caden Groves, trying to do the same with uh, more or less success, we'll say. Alright, Sergio is going to come back on Fulsang. Now, let's use the gel. Clément can take a of Sergio Iguita. And as soon as we reach this part, we can make a little move 
just a tad to try and separate ourselves from the peloton. Have we managed to do so? To do so, sorry. Just a bit. Just a bit. 22 riders. Jakob Fulisong chasing down Sergei Guita. But Jakob has already done a massive effort trying to win this stage on his own, which it would not be enough. Sergei Higuita wins here in the mold ahead of Kwiatkowski and Primoz Roglic. Jakob Fulisong in fourth place. Clément Champoussin finishes with the main bunch alongside Kravak and Henrik Mas. Did we drop anyone? Julian Philippe, Mikel Landa losing time today. Garen Thomas as well, the Formula jersey. David Formolo. Uh, Peter Sagan, and then the rest of these riders aren't really worth noticing. Okay, but it is yet another win today for Sergei Guita. But there's no caps again. Fam, what is this? Th again, I'm b I'm being robbed. I'm being robbed. Right, I f I feel like Primoz Roglic is Manchester United just getting every single call in their favor. Don't at me, United fans. You're lucky you got Bruno Fernandes. Because, bec because of Bruno Fernandes, you're still leading the GC by 6 seconds when you should be basically 30 seconds down at this point. Fucking hell. Clément Champoussin's 4th as he's jumped Mikel Landa. Big up. Okay. Well, 6 seconds. Now if I get a podium, I'm basically tied with Roglic. And actually, if I get 2nd or better. Tij Benut still in the Polka jersey. Caleb Yun still in uh, the green. Penultimate stage of the episode, and it's a zero for Sergei Guita. Thank God it's a flat stage there, plus four for Magnus Kortnison. Uh, KU Dunn, plus one for Caden Groves, as we've got some attacks. In kilometer zero, Tibor Ganarek, Damien Hausen. Uh, again, where's Zandos? What's happened with Zandos Bezegetov? What are we saying? Come on, Zandos, mate. This is your chance. Go in the break. You've got points today. Very interesting finish coming up here in Revel. Um, because not only do we have a climb before, the downhill and the final kilometers uh, will have a side wind with the finish with a downwind. Therefore, uh, we'll have to launch maybe a bit earlier than uh, we usually would. So basically, same time as I usually would, because I'm always too early. Only in cycling and PCM. <laughs> so I, I'm seeing you. Uh, but right, we'll just increase the rhythm with some of our guys right now to try and make, uh, well, to try and stay at the front of the peloton, and then uh, we'll go for the sprint. We use the gel with Benjamin Thomas. West Caden. Caden is not directly in the wheel of uh, of Benjamin, though, which kind of sucks. Uh, come on, son, you'll get there, you'll get there, you'll get there. Come on, I I, I trust you. There we go, my G. Caden Groves uh, in the wheel of Magnus Court Nielsen. We've taken that right hander, which I've talked about. Come on, son. Come on, Caden Groves against Sagan and Demar, and this time, we just can't catch them. On the Marquez win, ahead of Sagan, Caden Groves, Higuita, and Nessarboni. It's a plus three for the final stage of this episode, here for uh, the first announcement stage as well, on um, the Pyrenees, between Revel and Axe Rodemann, 184 kilometers with the Port de Balles, sorry, the Port de Payer, my bad, um, a HC, 15 kilometers, mass gradient, 15%, average of 8, and then the climb towards Axe Rodemann, uh, 8 kilometers long with an average of 8. Um, so two very tough climbs here in the Pyrenees. One uh, tougher than the other, mainly because of its length. But it's going to be a tough day. However, we are... Um, I mean, we're lucky because we've got both Higuita and Clément with a plus 3. Tejada with a plus 2 as well, which could prove to be very useful uh, in the latter stages of this race. Also, we're going to send Caden Groves in the breakaway. To get the um the sprint points, there's 40 points to take today. I mean, you never you never know. It's never too late for a comeback. I'll try today. We're approaching the second sprint here in Kion, and uh, if everything goes to plan, Caden will take all the points here. Let me just make sure that I can navigate through everyone. Perfect. Are they going to sprint? Nope, they're not. So that's plus 40 today for Caden Groves on everyone else. What does that mean? That means 254. We are now. 90 points behind, or 89 points behind Arnaud Demar, who is the current green jersey following yesterday's win. Um, the, the green jersey is very, uh, very photo off as well, with a, a lot of, uh, of potential candidates to win it, and a lot of riders who actually wore the jersey. And we're going to start the Port de Payer as soon as we take this right hander. There we go. Port de Payer coming up, 15k, and uh, it's not going to be a walk in the park at all. I'm expecting the peloton to pace like absolute balance from the get-go, and until its summit. Sadly, I had asked Benjamin to give me water, but it seems like our Frenchman, the former time troll champion in France, 
will not be able to um, provide us with the crucial hydration that our riders will need in a, a hot, hot month of July in France. And as I expected, the rhythm is mental. Tadej Pogacar has even attacked with Mass, Landa, Garin, Thomas. Guillaume Martin is a bit uh, behind. Then we have Tom Dumoulin, Primus Roglic, Egan Ben. Oh, Bernal. Oh, Bernal. Oh, Egan Bernal. Doesn't seem to be on top of his game here at the Colombian today. Tom Dumoulin's dropped. Jakob Fulsang's dropped. So Roglic is on his own despite having one of the best teams ever seen in cycling's history. Alaphilippe dropped. Anyone else maybe from the top 10 dropped. Remco Evenepoel. The um, young Belgian gone as well. And Bernal finished. Bernal is done. Bernal is done. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. Henrik Mass is gone as well. Uh, but he's actually attacked to drop everyone. Is he acting as the leader of Movistar? Oh, interesting. He could be. He could well and truly be acting as the leader of Movistar here. But Egan Bernal dropped with more than 5k left in the Port de Payer is uh, something I had not seen coming. I don't think many people did. Sergio do, doing quite well. For now, I can try to rest maybe for a tad. But I feel like a move has to be done. There might be something to, to do here. Come on. Come on, Sergio. We're going to use the... Uh, should I use the gel now? No, we'll use the gel maybe a bit later on. Let's just increase the rhythm right now. Let's go 79. Until the summit of the Port de Payer, we've dropped uh, Lutsenko, Garant, and Clément. Sadly, dropping Clément seemed to be uh, somewhat, uh, somewhat mandatory. Sergio doing well. Uh, it seems that Henrik Mass is the next one to crack. He is indeed. Uh, I feel like I did. The next one to crack might be me. So we might slow down here. Yeah, Higuita, Landa, Roglic, Pogacar. All at the same uh, time as we cross the summit of the Port de Payer and now head. Towards that long downhill towards Akhardamen. If Clément could come back, that would be just incredible. And we're going to start Akhardamen on uh, this left-hander. Oh, an attack from the get-go by Mikel Landa. Interesting to see Landa starting this early on. Uh, also, Bernal is with Champoussin, so therefore I didn't want to attack with, uh, with Clément, which kind of sacrificed him, in a way. Uh, okay. First attack, everyone responded somewhat positively with good legs. Uh, Tadej though with a very strong rhythm right now at the front of this group. Tadej is going. Tadej is going for an attack. Uh, I'm going to be very real. I do not think I have the legs to follow such a move here. Roglic is going. Roglic Pogacar goes. I might be a bit late to follow here. I mean I am a bit late to follow. Uh, but I wasn't sure I could follow actually. There we go. Perfect. We're going to join them again. Use the gel, try to recover energy. Landa struggling. Enric Mas, the two Spaniards struggling here against the two Slovenian. And it is the um, one rider without any national teammates doing maybe the best here. I mean, no, let's be honest. No, no, no. It's, it's probably doing the best. Let's be, let's be real. He's attacked again. And this time, oh, this time it's a big attack. This time it's a very big attack. Pogachar, as soon as Pogachar dr drops, um, well, jumps him though, they all stop. 1.3k to go. Someone dropped Enric Mas. Enric Mas dropping. We're going to try and increase the rhythm here in the final kilometer. Next the Can Sergio go for yet another win? 700 meters to go. Come on. Come on, Sergito. Come on, come on, come on. Sergio Iguita against Tade Pogacar. And the win is for Tade Pogacar today. Ahead of Iguita and Primus Roglic. I've... Why did I celebrate? <laughs> for fuck's sake. I don't know why I celebrated. Enric Mas comes in fifth place. Garin Thomas. Lutsenko doing very well from the breakaway. Clément Champoussin with a huge respect for him in 8th place. Egan Bernal losing big in 9th place. And then the rest of the peloton will uh, start to filter through more than 4 minutes behind today's winner, Tade Pogacar. Same time again between Pogacar, Higuita and Roglic. Meaning that coming at the end of this episode, we will have pretty much Roglic leading by 4 little seconds over our own Sergio Higuita. Mikel in 3rd place, Tade Pogacar. And Clément Champoussin holding on for now to a top 5 finish with Egan Bernal dropping a lot today. Probably the biggest loser uh, after today's stage. Henrik Mas is in 7th place with Garin Thomas. Remco Evenepoel still in the top 10 following um, well, the issues he's had today. Leg issues most likely. Uh, Tij Benut is still in Polka. However, Sergio Guzman is making a nice comeback in 2nd place. Tied with Georg Zimmermann now with one more week of mountain. Everything is yet to play for in the Polka classification. The same can be said about the green classification. 
Arnaud Demar, Caleb Ewan, Mats Pedersen seem to be the three main contenders at this point uh, now for the um for the, the green jersey. But you never know, Pete Sagan could always pull through. But mainly, I'm hoping that Caden Groves pull through and does something huge. Um, as Sergio is well and truly now the way the white jersey dropping again Bernal from 30 seconds to 2 minutes 59. And uh, team wise, we are still leading despite losing uh, quite some time today with Magnus Cognizant. I mean. If we forget the fact that I celebrated at the summit, I think it's a decent day for me. I think Sergio did well. Eventually, um, we could have potentially done better had I not, like, paced in the Port de Payer. I don't know. I don't know. Um, same second as Pugacar and Roglic on the mountain stage. Uh, they both have 80 plus. I have 77. So I will happily take it. I think it's a very, very good day. Uh, that we've had today, and uh, knowing the week we're gonna have, we better make sure that we uh, make the most out of these days because um, the next episode will be the final one of this Tour de France with uh, with YTC. Starting with Pamier Bagnard de Luchon, should not be too much of an issue here for uh, for the gaps. I mean, it most likely can be a breakaway stage. I'm leaning towards a Tejada win potentially. Bagnard de Luchon, again, quite similar parkour. I mean, I'm uh, also hoping or aiming for a breakaway win, but you never know. I might try to pull off um, one of uh, my black warp sets. And then the big one, Pau Col du Tourmalet. This is the stage that scares me. It really is. Because to be fair, then it's a sprint stage between Salit Béarn and Bordeaux. And Bordeaux, sorry. Nothing is going to be done. And then there's this. A 51 kilometer time trial between Bordeaux and Boyac. And just like in 2010, I do believe that whoever is the best time trialist will win the GC. And I mean, I've got 70, Roglic has a 76. He's got 72 flats, I've got 72 flats. I need to create gaps with Roglic, otherwise my chances of winning the Tour de France are basically, like, nullified. And then we'll have the classic stage on the Champs-Élysées. So, sprint-wise, there's 100 points left in s just pure finishes. And what's my gap we said? Like, 70? 90. Oh, it's gonna be tough. I need to get every single mountain point there. Well, mountain points. I need to get every single intimate sprint from mountain stages. And win... Oh my god, I'm gonna struggle so much. Well, 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 well. There will be a lot to play for for the final episode of the Tour de France in uh, well, with YTC. I do hope you've enjoyed this one. If you did, then do smash the like down below. As I said, one more episode. Sunday, 6 p.m. CET, 5 p.m. GMT. You lot better be there because you, we might witness history. I've won YouTube's first classic. Could I win them their first Grand Tour? We'll see that on Sunday. Have a great one. My name has been Michael. Goodbye. Pull up, pull up in the gold I'm bleeding. What am all the money feeding? I don't wanna go bombi. Them I don't know what I do when I go from bleeding. Leading the pack in black and I'm on with the bear. Snapping with a phone and dab. Boss up a man with a duster. Put him in a drip and sip blockbuster.